Hi, I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. I'm here today with Samant Segal, founder and CEO at BreachLock, developers of a world-class, award-winning penetration testing as a service platform. To learn more about BreachLock, visit breachlock.com. Samant, great to have you with us today. Uh, We're here to talk about penetration testing or pen testing. Before we dive in, for any listeners who don't know exactly what it is, or for anyone that needs a refresher with a modern day description, give us a 30,000 foot view, Samant, on penetration testing. What is it and why do it? Absolutely. So pen testing essentially is looking for a weakness in a system, right? Now take a real world example here. If you're building a house, you put a door in front of it, right? And then you basically check the handle and the lock if it's working properly. Now put that into a business context, you would bring up a system and then you would want to check if the adversary here being the cyber criminal can misuse it and get into it, right? So this whole process is essentially what you call as pen testing. Now coming on to the why, this is a really interesting question and not many people understand it. This is almost like a no brainer because you you could ask yourself a question, why cybersecurity? You do cybersecurity because we have adversaries in this industry, which are cyber criminals, right? So if you're spending $1 on cybersecurity, and if you're not doing pen testing, you're doing something terribly wrong because you don't know if the defenses that you've put in place are actually working. Makes sense. So we asked you to join us, uh, Samant, because uh, you personally have probably as much experience as anyone I've met in the industry uh, with pen testing. Uh, you have certificates, uh, including uh, Cisco CCNA, you're a certified ethical hacker. Cybersecurity is a broad field. Maybe you could narrow it down for us and speak to what type of credentials do pen testers have or should they have? Right. So, you know, when it comes to pen testing, there are several certifications that are out there, but the best ones are really where you offer a lab environment to an attacker and then let them hack into it and prove their credentials, right? Personally speaking, I've got a little bit of a different opinion about this because for me, hacking is not really a skill set, it's a mindset, right? So when we hire hackers or ethical hackers for breach lock, we're basically looking for that research, uh, you know, the X factor in terms of if if you present a system to an attacker, are they immediately switching to that hacker mindset and thinking that now I'm presented with the system and can I make it do something that it's not supposed to do? So for us, it's more the mindset. So Samant, can you take us back in time? Uh, when did pen testing start uh, both as a, as a practice and when did we really see companies start to show up in the market offering uh, penetration testing products and platforms? Right. So, you know, on your channel, you've had greats like Kevin Mitnick, so they can tell you all about the history of uh, pen testing. I'll give you a different view in terms of the commercial aspects of this, right? So if you, I've got like two decades of experience uh, in cybersecurity, and especially the first five years, there was a word called security auditing, right? That was used interchangeably with, with the word pen testing. Now, you might think where that is coming from, right? So it's essentially business owners were faced with risk all day in day-to-day business, right? And that was mainly financial risk. And then came this IT thing and took over the whole business environment. And all of a sudden, they had to deal with non-financial risk. Now, if they have to find out stuff about non-financial risk, who did they turn to, right? They turned to accountants. And that's how this whole security auditing business started, right? Eventually, over the course of 10, 15 years, we've seen more modernized approaches with, you know, OWASP standards and NIST standards coming in, where you see this term called pen testing coming, you know, in the forefront, really. And I think that's the right direction to go in. So what I really want to help our listeners understand is the market today. So CISO security leaders, they know what pen testing is they, and they understand mm-hmm. it. But what types of platforms are out there? What types of different services are out there? How varied are the offerings? Absolutely. Yeah, so it can be a very crowded market, right, when it comes to cybersecurity. I'll break it down for your listeners here. So essentially, in the pen testing world, you could see that there are three kind of companies that exist today, right? One are the more technology-centric, or let's say the automated uh, vulnerability scanning companies, right? 
The second are more the bug bounty oriented companies, which are more in the crowdsource space. And the third one, which I think will be extinct in another few years, are the more boutique pen testing firms, as we call it, right? Which are basically selling man hours to these CISOs that are buying it, right? So these are essentially the three type of companies that are out there. So your company is very innovative. You're generating a lot of buzz. Um, I've heard BreachLock mentioned by a number of different CISOs. Um, I'd, I'd like the elevator pitch for our audience. I was on the homepage, uh, you know, when I first met you, uh, reading a little bit about the company. Uh, it says penetration testing is a service powered by certified hackers and artificial intelligence. But let's hear it from you. Right. So you're right. We've generated quite a buzz in the market because uh, we've got an innovative approach. And thanks to our you know, brilliant team and the 400 plus clients that we have. But in essence, what we're doing is we are attacking the last piece that I told you in the previous question when you asked me, right? The boutique pen testing firms. So we want to disrupt the traditional pen testing market, which is operating by 1980 standards, not by 2020 standards. And how we really do it is with three components, right? The first component there is a SaaS platform that we've built where you can come in as a client, you can order a pen test, you can request support, you can validate your patches and you can request a retest and get the attestation from us that your system is fully secure. So, right, it's the ease of doing business with our SaaS platform. The second component that we've introduced is really the artificial intelligence piece. So you could see in, in manual pen testing, there's hundreds of tasks on a day-to-day -day basis that are done in a very repetitive way using the same tool. So we've automated all of that. So then our uh, human hackers, which are which is essentially the third component we have, they would be focused on finding more complex flaws because our AI bot, our hack bot, has already found all of the basic stuff. So they need to do all the hard work in the third component and basically check everything before our report is presented to our clients. I think that all as a package is what is creating the buzz in the market that you really see now. You're also ahead of the game in so far as IoT devices, right? When pen testing started out years ago, and I think it might even be true of some companies today, the focus is on apps, uh, apps, you know, in the cloud. But what about IoT devices? Uh, talk to us about that. How do pen testing services differ uh, around IoT devices? Absolutely. So you're right. We've done a few projects in IoT space, and uh, it is essentially very different, right? Because compared to an app, which is like hosted somewhere or it's on your desktop, now you've got a device in your hand, which has got a lot of interfaces available to an attacker, right? Call it the Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi, the RJ jack that's on it. And you also have to look at different aspects, such as the firmware, right? Because companies also worried if they've taken OEM equipment from elsewhere, another country, they also want to see if there are any rootkits in there, right? So that's another angle that you might want to look at. The other aspects would be if the data is en encrypted. So yes, the IoT space is very different, but then also we're living in a connected world. So usually what we see is that it comes in combination with a SaaS platform or an Android or an iOS app. Now you talk to a lot of CISOs and security leaders. You have a large client base. Are they getting more uh, concerned about IoT devices? You hear these numbers, you know, Cisco predicts that, uh, you know, by next year we'll have 50 billion devices connected. Uh, you know, I've heard numbers from Intel into, you know, the hundreds of billions. Are they starting to ask you about this? Do you see this as being part of the next wave of pen testing? Oh, absolutely. And I think it also connects to the kind of innovation that's coming into the IoT space, right? So they're definitely very curious and curious from two perspectives, really, right? One is the consumer market, right? So we had, an, uh, a, we had a client who had a Christmas light that had to go in a lot of consumers' houses that we had to test in combina combination with the Android and iOS app. So there you have the CISOs having very different concerns because you're dealing with consumer data here and basically, you know, their, their internal network where another client had a wall mounted device, which would count the number of people coming into the building. Right. And then they had very different concerns because then you're in your client network and the device is then collected, connected to the client network. So yes, there are a lot of different concerns, but also very interesting ones. Cause you know, with all these new, uh, 
devices that are being now innovated upon and introduced into the network, it really gives a very different perspective to the standard cybersecurity hacking that we do all day. Yeah, I mean, if I'm a hospital CISO, you know, I'm really going to be thinking about uh, IoT devices differently than maybe another industry where, you know, these can be life-threatening devices. Do, do you get inquiries from, uh, you know, the healthcare space? Are they concerned about that? So especially with COVID coming along, we've seen a big boom in these assistance apps, uh, you know, be it chatbots or, or mobile apps. We haven't really seen much happening in the IoT space. We, they do have some concerns when it comes to the network, right? Essentially, because these things that monitor you with all kind of wires on your, on your body when you're in a hospital bed, they're all connected to the network. That's how they're getting the readings. So we have done some projects in, in hospitals on that. And essentially, from healthcare tech perspective, we've been getting a lot of inquiries on, you know, chatbots or mobile apps or voice command operated, uh, you know, medical assistants that that are basically helping a lot in terms of the frontline workers, you know, getting their workload done because the patients can be dealt with them. So it's great to contribute to to the COVID crisis and keeping things secure. So I had a Fortune 500 CISO ask me a question about social engineering pen testing. This was a couple of weeks ago, and I knew that you were coming on. So I told her that I'd get back to her. So I wanted to you know, ask you about this here on the podcast today. Are you getting a lot of demand? What are the issues and concerns that you're hearing? And what does BreachLock do in that area? Absolutely. So there are essentially, you know, this market is already very crowded, the, the fishing as a service market or the fishing tools market, because you have these fishing simulation tools that are then coupled with the training element. What we do as breach lock is very different, right? So we take a two step approach to this, which is highly customized to each company. So the first step there really is looking at your company as a hacker from a hacker's perspective and collecting all the data that we can get from, let's say, the open source community, uh, the breaches that have happened in the past, the dark web chatter that is happening about your company and the announcements, right? Who joined the company, who left the company. And based on that, we would give you this report so you could look at the overall aspects of how a hacker is viewing your company as a target at that point in time. And really taking this as the input, we go to the second step where we create very customized spear phishing campaigns, right? Which are highly targeted at your employees. And then we launch those campaigns. We see how many emails were sent, delivered, clicked upon, what data came out of it, and really what you could do in the end to make your security awareness program really top of the bill from where it is now. So as you can you know, hear in my story, it's a very customized approach compared to some of the one-click tool solutions that you see in the market today. So, Samant, where is the market going, uh, you know, looking ahead three years from now, five years from now, uh, where do you see the pen testing market? Right. So, as I said in the beginning, you know, the market right now is really a man hour driven market, right, which is absolutely not the way to go forward. And it's a market that's waiting to be disrupted. So you would see this moving more in the direction of solutions first. So instead of selling the consulting piece, companies like BreachLock will come forward and give it a solution angle. Then you would eventually see it going towards standardization, right? Because everything then seems to make sense and it's all very standardized. And I think after a long while, you would see this pen testing business really becoming one of the hygiene checks that every company would be doing. And I think that's the state I'd like the society and businesses to reach in, in the coming five years. And I think at that time, it would be the right moment to move more towards commoditizing something that you call as red teaming today, right? Whereas in pen testing, you're focusing on a system. And in red teaming, you're focusing on the ecosystem. So let's say the banks, the oil companies, the, the healthcare sector, right? And you see from that point on, in terms of where the risks are and how you can help different sectors mitigate it. So that's how I see it going from solution to standardization, all the way up to the ecosystem testing and leaving behind the system-based testing for a daily hygiene check as an example. So Samant, uh, to close out here, I just wanna ask uh, one last question about your company. You're growing quickly, you've got 400 customers, we're hearing more and more about you. We're in the midst of a labor crunch. Um, 
big companies obviously are feeling the pinch. It's hard to find people despite, you know, COVID. We're still seeing, uh, you know, a large number of uh, positions that are going unfilled in our space. Where do you find the people for your company? Uh, you know, what, what does your team look like and, and how do you find these people? Right. So we are very globally spread, right? We are operating out of three countries as we speak. So we are in the U.S., the Netherlands, and India. India is where our uh, software development team is, and Netherlands and U.S. is where really our ethical hackers and the sales team is. So COVID really did not impact us that much because we always went with the remote first approach. So we do have offices in all of these three locations, but we are very flexible in terms of how our systems are built. And to be honest with you, Steve, uh, the COVID thing really helped a company like ReachLock uh, from from a a resourcing perspective because a lot of good talent was available, especially in the U.S. market. And we recently hired a top-notch sales director for us, you know, and and so people are very receptive. They're looking for these sustainable pandemic-proof businesses, so to say, and, and we are making the most of it there. Well, the feedback uh, about your company has just been phenomenal. We talked to a lot of people. Hope to have you back on with us soon, Samant. Looking forward to it, Steve. Thank you. I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. Joining us today was Samant Segal, founder and CEO at BreachLock, developers of a world-class, award-winning penetration testing as a service platform. To learn more about BreachLock, visit breachlock.com. You can watch all of our videos at cybercrimemagazine.com.